Matt Drudge in the December issue of Vanity Fair is a picture here of Sydney and Jacqueline Jordan Blumenthal. And uh, I want to ask you first, what's the status of the lawsuit against you? Well, we've got a uh, first preliminary hearing in the spring, so that's where it stands. Uh, very interesting article uh, written by Jeanette Conant, uh, who uh, uh, did Giuliani before she did me, so I was kind of nervous going into it, but I think I came out looking, uh, I think it was a fair piece. What do you think of all this publicity you're getting? Um, it's interesting. I think what is happening is the Internet is making a lot of people nervous, and they're directing a lot of, that, of their energy towards me as, as trying to at least put a human face on chaos or a new medium. Uh, so I'm receiving a lot of, uh, you know, I think of a lot of the publicity isn't really warranted because I'm just one reporter reporting what I see and what I hear. Tell the audience that's never seen you or heard about you before what they uh, can find on the Internet uh, that you do. Well, what I, I've set up a website that has raw links to wire services, which where for the first time you don't have to be in a newsroom. You don't have to work for a news organization to have access to what's moving on the wires. Uh, I've, uh, there are places you can go on the internet and get the AP for free and UPI for free. So you become the newspaper editor. You get to see what your local papers are keeping out or what the networks are, 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 are moving around. So that's one aspect of what I do. The other aspect is I've combined, I think, the best list of working journalists and pundits and columnists uh, in America. Uh, again, all offered for free, all in one place without uh, advertising. So it's a, it's a simple click to go right to what uh, Sapphire's saying this morning or Liz Smith or Maureen Dowd. Uh, and then, of course, I've got my little column, which has caused a little bit of commotion. I'd like to ask our audience to join us by phone. Tell us what you think of the idea of using the Internet uh, and all these connections to learn about what's going on in the world. This picture they have of you in Vanity Fair, you're sitting on a stack of newspapers. Where was it taken? Uh, I was taken down at the Paramount Studios about three or four miles uh, west of here. Uh, and it, it is kind of an interesting shot because what I do uh, is I've, I've sort of combined all the resources available. And I sit on top of them every night and every morning. And I, I move them around and I highlight what I think is news. What's the most interesting story right now that you're working on? Um, got a lot of interesting things. Uh, we have a beautiful movie opening in Hollywood today all over the country called Titanic. And it's a great analogy for what I think is happening to us with the, the stock market being at record levels and affluence and everything uh, peaking out. We, we feel like we can't go down. And here comes this movie that really does uh, capture what it's like when, uh, when uh, modern man has a, has a, a fall. And uh, it's, it, it really got me. And the story, the lead story this morning is Asia again. Uh, we've got the Tokyo, the Japan stock market going down 6% nearly overnight. So on my website, that's the big screen. Let's go to Chicago for the first call on a Democratic line. Go ahead, please. Hi, Brian. Thank you for having me on here this morning. As a matter of fact, I wanted to compliment you for being a real professional in the context of what you do. I really admire your style. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to call in the Thurnstroms around, but I'm going to make a comment about Matt Trudge. That's what I ha uh, the Thurns I'm a black um, London train scientist, and I wanted to necessarily point out to the to the to the Thurnstroms as to their methodology, which was more or less a a conservative uh, thesis masquerading as social science, uh, because in London such a book would never have been. And I hope, Baron that you will bring on people like Orlando Patterson and the guy who wrote Two Americas recently. Now, for Matt Drudge, one of the things, problems I have with Matt Drudge is the fact that there is a, a book called Inarticulate Society, and this is a part, and, and also The Triumph of Meanness, two, two outstanding books, Brian, i like to see you review, because these, the guys like Matt Drudge, if you notice up there, you have him both as a publisher and an editor. He does, nobody edits him. And he is one of the people, and I consider myself as an intellectual trained at London University, this is one of the people in America that is causing the dumb and down of America uh, in a sense that they could come on and even get publicity in C-SPAN this morning. Why, give us a reason, because we have to keep moving here. Why do you think he's dumbing down America? 
Well, frankly speaking, he's not edited by anybody. He doesn't have an editor, and 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 news, and he is combining gossip with news. That's okay, we'll leave it at that, Mr. Drudge. What do you say to that charge? Well. <sighs> He's going to have a hard time in the future when everyone's got a website and everyone could become a reporter. You know, there is a potential we're going to have 300 million reporters in America, most of them without editors, with the ability to communicate uh, to a large scale to a wide group of people. So, uh, you know, the, the attitude that we all need to be edited and we all have to go to the highest schools in order to report, you don't get a license to report. And uh, what I do, a lot of what I do is cover the coverage. Uh, so, you know, I don't know where you learn how to do that. Everything I've learned about reporting, I've learned on my own. In the next segment, by the way, we're going to balance out what we heard from the Thernstroms, or at least attempt to. Constance Rice will be our guest on that bus in Los Angeles. He's a Los Angeles civil rights attorney. And uh, you mentioned education, Mr. Drudge. Four of six of our guests this morning did work at Harvard, studied at Harvard, either taught at Harvard. How much Harvard education do you have? Oh, yeah, the, the closest I ever came to a university was in this school bus right now. I mean, I've got, I've got very little education, and uh, that is being used against me. I also think there, there is a way of, of reporting stories that intellectualism can get in the way. Uh, so uh, I leave it to my reader. You know, every reader I have comes to me, and my first loyalty is to the reader. Who's paying, uh, by the way, your legal fees? How are you doing that? Is it, is it costing you very much on this suit from the Blumenthal's? I've got a, a, a top-notch pro bono libertarian lawyer who has taken my case on because he feels it is such an attempt to, uh, to, to squash free speech. So uh, I don't have much of an income. I don't have advertisers. Uh, so I, I'm not paying for my legal representation. And I have set up a defense fund. What's your lawyer's name? Uh, Manny Klausner. Uh, and he's a, uh, he, he led the battle for the Prop 209 uh, win here in California, among other things. Let's go. To, uh, we got to go to the phones because we want to get calls for you. Gaithersburg, Maryland, go ahead, please. Good morning. Um, Happy holidays to both of you, and good to be on uh, C-SPAN discussing this important issue. Mr. Drudge, um, got a question for you. You mentioned your, your website that you set, set up uh, for these links to the news organizations. Could you, by chance, give, give that uh, website uh, address? And I'd like to also know what you think about the new Internet copyright law signed uh, Tuesday by President Clinton. That Thanks, caller. Yeah, this is an interesting issue because there's a lot of uh, people who cut and paste stories and post them without permission. I'm gonna, it's going to be very interesting to see how we enforce copyrighted information on the Internet. They're going to try real hard. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I just do a lot of links to stories. I don't put the stories on my own website, so there, there's some difference there. But, uh, yeah, it's, that, that is definitely a story I'm concerned about. Other websites are, are, are concerned about. Uh, but I, I do think that if a newspaper spends all the resources to build a story, they own that story. Uh, they may not own the headline, but they definitely own the story, and they should get full copyright control on it. In this story by uh, Jeanette, uh, is it, it pronounce her name correctly? Conant. Conant. Uh, she writes, uh, there was the day Times columnist Maureen Dowd was trying to keep a low profile in an ABC briefing when Drudge materialized out of nowhere and began quizzing her about where what she was up to. Not only did he recognize the writer, he told her that she is he that he and his friend Anita Hill, bashing writer David Brock, had once paid a, a surprise visit to her Washington townhouse, hoping to catch her frying an omelet. But she wasn't home. You know where I live, Dowd reportedly asked in horror. Is this true? True story. Uh, you know, it's, it's become sort of a folklore, that uh, thing in Washington. I believe in America where we're used to knock on people's doors and say, how are you? Enjoy your work. I guess, uh, you know, maybe we'll go back to that. How did you uh, find out where Maureen Dowd lived? Uh, I tend to be pretty good at finding where people are and what they're doing. Philadelphia, you're on with Matt Drudge. Uh, yes, hi. Um, the reason I'm calling is uh, I'm one of these uh, internet uh, 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 news people who um, has turned to the internet in the last month or so for all of my news. Um, I'm on the verge actually of, of uh, canceling the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, I can go on to Mr. Drudge's page and click on uh, the uh, freerepublic.com and keep fully apprised of uh, all the Whitewater-related uh, investigations that are going on 
from uh, uh, investigative news people from around the country, and I don't, I'm no longer, uh, uh, you know, read the Philadelphia Inquirer and, and have to read regurgitated AP news accounts. Thanks. Matt Dredge, what's your subscription level at the moment? Uh, I'm, I'm coming up to about 100000 which is, is, is pretty interesting. When and it's gonna, a when are you going to start charging? Yeah, you asked me that uh, last summer. I'm not. Uh, again, there's no way really to collect the money. Uh, it's a new medium. Uh, my mission is not to become rich. Uh, so for, for, I'm just going to offer it as is. Uh, the guy met, mentions an interesting point. Yeah, the, the, the Internet and Mike McCurry and the White House, it's an interesting battle going on because Clinton and Gore are the first two to come through the Internet era where you have a lot of microscope, uh, a lot of reporting, a lot of people seeing raw stories. And I think the White House feels that people are ganging up on them, but I think any president from here on in is going to have uh, a lot of attention given to them, simply because, like I said, there's a lot of uh, new information available to uh, people outside of newsrooms. Jackson, Mississippi for Matt Dredge. Go ahead, please. Uh, I wanted to take issue with the previous caller who suggested that uh, that Matt Drudge is dumbing down the world. Actually, what he's done is brought uh, publications to people who would never have them delivered to them before or could not afford the subscription costs. Uh, the New York Times, for instance. Uh, uh, my question uh, is, is uh, how does your web page and your reporting compare to, uh, uh, to Slate, uh, Mr. Kinsley's publication, and how uh, and how do you assess the viability and the long-term uh, 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 staying power of of, uh, of that uh, of that webzine, and, or is that and is that the, uh, the the future to come? Thanks. Well, I, you know, I, I, I like Kinsley, and I, I like his mind, I, a, a very interesting guy. The, he's currently running a poll on me, which I thought was a low blow. Uh, is Matt Drudge good for journalism? And uh, Susan Estridge and David Frum are doing a back-and-forth dialogue on my lawsuit and First Amendment issues and uh, the, the White House involvement in civil litigation, et cetera. And uh, I think he was trying to... Uh, to uh, to basically frame my issue in a negative light and it backfired because the polling is running 70 percent in favor of me 30 percent against me so you know you never know where these people are coming from uh, online and you you really do risk taking uh, taking on somebody let's go next from Matt Drudge to Machias Maine up uh, down east go ahead please Hi, this is Larry in down East Maine. Yes, sir. Uh, Matt, this is really great. The first time that I get on C-SPAN, uh, you are the first person I click on when I <laughs> log on to the Internet. Why? Thanks. Why, caller? Well, because he is a source, uh, uh, you know, a link to just about uh, anything else I'd want to get, the, the, uh, the editors and, and, uh, and other newspapers. I got uh, turned on to Matt by the Mary Madeline Show. And, uh, Matt, I used to uh, edit the Wire News and do do uh, news for KPFK in Los Angeles. I lived there for a number of years as a volunteer. I, I have a question for you. Um, my question is this. Uh, you have some links to the, to the White House, some sources, and obviously without revealing your sources, would you give me an idea as to why White House staffers would leak information to you or to anybody else for that matter? It's a very good question, you know, and I, every once in a while I have an online chat whether it be in America Online or out on the Internet, with someone who is actually working in the White House. It's a very interesting dynamic that you could be sharing information with the center of power uh, via Internet sharing uh, information. I often wonder why people give me things. I, I think there is a frustration level at any job you have, and uh, I would suspect that applies to White House staffers, uh, too. When did you work in the CBS gift shop in Studio City, California? Well, just two years ago, I was folding T-shirts. Uh, so you've come a long way. And uh, this is what can still happen in America. How do you make your money now? Um, uh, America Online buys my column. And uh, so that, that's, that's one uh, main resource I've got going now. Anybody? But, it's, but any it's very simple, Brian. I mean, the, 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 the web page is free. It's just my time and uh, the cat food to feed my cats. Do you have uh, an agent getting your speaking engagements? 
Um, no speaking engagements. I am speaking at a few places, but I'm doing everything on my own. I, I just taped a Nightline. Uh, Howard Kurtz is now working for ABC News, I can report, uh, and they're doing a Nightline on the Drudge Report. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I coordinate all my my own schedule. I, I, I issue the Drudge Report when warrant, uh, when the when the news warrants. So uh, uh, I'm my own my own man. Matt Drudge, originally from Tacoma Park, Maryland, right here in the Washington suburbs, Kaiser, West Virginia. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Fine. Welcome. Hey, Mr. Drudge, uh, I check on your webpage every day. I'm an Internet junkie, so to speak, and I enjoy everything that you have there. One of the comments that I've got that really upsets me is like the guy from Fox a while ago referred to your page as something like a UFO conspiracy theory type of uh, information. That is just so far-fetched. In fact, uh, I heard a gentleman from uh, CNN the other day refer to it in the same derogatory comments. Brian, this is one reason I feel like that we have such a bias in our reporting and our networks. This is terrible. If you look at this uh, web page, there is a variety of everything on there. ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, C-SPAN, uh, different uh, editors uh, across the nation, AP News. I just do not understand why people that are in the media, uh, and when I say the media, CBS, NBC, and CNN, refer to this man and his web page in such derogatory comments. Is it ignorance? I mean, have they not looked at his web page? What's the problem here, Brian? I, I do not understand this. And uh, I do not see anything wrong with uh, a web page having uh, different viewpoints in it. And that's what his web page covers. It's a very informative and, uh, like the caller before says, most of the uh, up-to-date information you get newsworthy today is on the Internet. You cannot get it through. Uh, your networks any longer. It's terrible. The basic information, Matt Drudge, as you know, comes out in publications or wire services that are paid for by somebody. What happens to your service when um, all that, if they all start charging? Uh, good point, Brian. And you know that's we'll take we'll deal with that when uh, when it when it happens. And I think about that all the time. Uh, but back to a point: Why is CNN and why do these people put me in a negative light? CNN named me Turkey of the Year. Um, uh, I've been Outrage of the Week. Um, I think it's because there's a turf war going on. Uh, it's not because I make mistakes and I retract them. They do that too. Uh, but there is a shift. There's a shift of, of going from a corporate structure to a, a more of an individual uh, doing things. And plus, I've, I've been very aggressive reporting on CNN. So I, I think they're being a little disingenuous by coming after me. Matt Drudge is in our school bus, seated outside of the Los Angeles uh, library there in downtown uh, Los Angeles. How long have you lived in that city? Ten years, and what a dynamic town it is. And uh, it's, it's good for the time zone. I love being three hours behind, so I get to stay up late and see what, what you're going to be talking about in the morning. Uh, the, the, the climate's beautiful. We're about to going up to 60s, uh, 70 degrees today. So uh, When do you sleep? What hours? Uh, depends. There's a, there's a quiet period between midnight and about 5 a.m. Let's go to Houston, Texas, please. Go ahead. Yes, I'm calling because I have, I've been reading the Drudge Report ever since I first heard about it. I read it almost daily, and I also, and I love the fact that I am able to link to so many different columnists of differing viewpoints. However, this Blumenthal thing says to me that the popular press, the print and television, they didn't verify this story. All they did was pick up a story, which you can pick up at Bill Nichols. There are a million people out there who say things on the Internet who are, that is untrue or anything else. Nobody bothered to verify what the story about Blumenthal. Then they put it in the papers. They have a responsibility. Thanks, caller. Here's a picture in the Vanity Fair magazine of the Blumenthals. Have you, do you know them, uh, Matt Drudge? No, I've never met them, and I was, uh, it was interesting to read that before he went to work, the first day at the White House, he was up at midnight reading my Drudge Report. Do you have, uh, do you have any concern about the depositions that will happen in this uh, suit? Uh, no, I don't. And, you know, it, it's very interesting because Joe Lockhart, the deputy press secretary at the White House, uh, publicly stated that the vice president and the president are supporting Mr. Blumenthal in the action. 
Um, I have some questions of their involvement. Uh, Susan Estrich wrote an op-ed in USA Today coming out, uh, basically defending uh, the way I reported the story and retracted it within a day and apologized for what I wrote. Um, the, Joe Lockhart, in a conversation with USA Today editors, um, questioned Susan Estrich and complained uh, to her, her, her editors there. And my question is, what is a tax-paid employee at the White House doing uh, questioning civil litigation and putting pressure on editors? Um, uh, Matt Dredge, uh, you were, uh, we carried something the other day that you were involved in. Matt, uh, Michael Kinsley was sitting there with you talking. Marty Kaplan was the moderator, I believe it was at USC, and Marty Kaplan's married to Suzanne Estridge. Uh, is there any connection there as to why you were on the stage there? Uh, no, no, it's the first day I ever met either of them. What did you so. think of that discussion? A interesting discussion. Uh, New York Times and Microsoft uh, and Drudge on the same stage. That's a nice picture. Well, and the Todd Purdom, who uh, was on the stage with you there, is uh, in this article in the Vanity Fair, and it says there was the day Drudge surprised New York Times reporter Todd Purdom by casually greeting him on Wilshire Boulevard just weeks after Purdom had moved west to become the Times' Los Angeles bureau chief. Why did that surprise him? Uh, they don't, the people, these bureau chiefs and these, these media stars don't really think that they're celebrities when they are. People like this, you know, networks like this one and others uh, make these people celebrities. Uh, Todd Purdom to me is like Mel Gibson. Leavenworth, Washington, go ahead, please. Yeah, it's uh, kind of nice to be on this early in the morning. Um, one of the things that I think it was on C SPAN, uh, Matt Dredge was once before that, that's where I heard about it. And I logged on to it, and I'm new to the internet, so. Uh, I go to that one every day. And the thing that I find is that the conservative Republicans that are saying that, you know, there's no, uh, um, oh, there's a, the liberal bias in the media and everything, uh, I think I think they're kind of missing it. If they logged on the Drudge Report and went to that Whitewater file, there's just all kinds of stuff on Clinton. That, and it's not some screwy newspaper that's, putting it out. It's like Chicago Sun-Times and uh, I'm looking at it right now, MS, uh, NBC. They all have articles. And I was surprised how the media, and I do feel they're a bit liberal tending, uh, are going after them in the print media. Doesn't happen to make it on to the, the uh, major television networks, but at least the print media. However, out here, we may not get those stories uh, I know I, we don't in the local uh, Wenatchee world, but like Seattle Times doesn't cover a lot of this stuff too. And boy, it's really eye-opening to see there are a lot of the what we consider liberal media, print media, really going after Clinton, and there's a lot of questions unanswered out there. Is that true, Matt Drudge, from your perspective? It is. You know, the whole arguments of left-right are changing. Uh, this, this internet is sort of leveling it out. Uh, and if you've got a point of view, get it out there. And uh, we'll, come, we'll come hear you. By the way, if people want to read your stuff uh, on the internet, how do they find it? I know it's hyperlinked to our, today for our uh, website, but how do they find it otherwise? Uh, simple address, www.drudgereport.com, uh, or do a search under the last name Drudge on any of the search engines, and you'll probably find a link over there. And how do you find the uh, America Online? Keyword Drudge. Let's go, uh, let's go to Metropolis, Illinois. Go ahead, please. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. You're on the air, sir. Okay, fine. How are you fellows this morning? Fine. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I just want to compliment Matt Drudge. I check him out just about every day. I think he and the Western Journalism Center and Chuck Harder are probably the three best sources of news in America today. Uh, the, the fact that these other outfits keep hammering at him is really a left-handed compliment. He is hurting him because he's reporting pretty much straight news while they're giving us what I think is a lot of propaganda, a lot of elitist propaganda. Let me ask you why you like Chuck Harder. Who is he? And then also the Western Journalism Center. Well, the, uh, I'll start with Chuck Harder. I've listened to him for several years. He's a radio uh, talk show host. He brings a lot of news uh, that you do not hear on uh, the 6 o'clock news. You don't read it in your major papers, not to any great extent, I think. But he brings a lot of news. Like right now, he's been covering the, uh, oh, the uh, Oklahoma City bunch, the trial out there in uh, Denver, Colorado. He's been covering that very well with J.D. Cash, a reporter of his. What about Western Journalism Center? Western 
Journalism Center has got a really good uh, page. They have a lot of news. They have a lot of stuff by Joe Farrell, which I really like, and uh, other things, too. They also hyperlink. Okay, thanks. Matt Dredge, do you know both of those names? Both of those? Yeah, I know. Sure, I know both of them. Yeah. Uh, th there's, a lot of, there's a lot of information out there, and uh, you can pretty much find... One thing I did agree with uh, Britt Hume in your, your opening setup, it is what you make it. And uh, What's your favorite website, other than your own? Uh, I, I like going to wires, and I love uh, weather and earthquakes and uh, things like this. I love websites that offer raw statistics and stuff like that, because i got a pretty active mind that can do things with uh, just, uh, just basic information. By the way, uh, in the Blumenthal suit, how much money is involved? Uh, they're asking for $30 million in damages uh, that are... That are that is, it's equivalent to what the O.J. civil trial awarded for the double murders. What are the chances you'll settle that before you go to trial? Uh, for $30 million, uh, not likely. Thank you, Matt Dredge. We're out of time. We'll be back with Constance Rice in just a few moments.